Welcome to the first video for the body in motion. This video is going to focus on the dot point skeletal systems, which is the first dot point for the critical question, how do the musculoskeletal and cardiorespiratory systems of the body influence and respond to movement? Now your syllabus for this dot point asks you to know the major bones involved in movement, the structure and function of synovial joints, and also the joint actions. Your learn to requires you to identify the location and type of major bones involved in movement. For example, long bones articulate at hinge joints for flexion and extension. The skeletal system's functions are to support the body, to allow for movement, to provide protection, to produce blood cells, uh, to store minerals, and also to be involved with the endocrine regulation. Now we look at the major bones involved in movement, and I want you to have a look at this skeleton. Now in this skeleton, you can see that there is a red section and a white section. The red section is called the axial skeleton, and it includes the skull, the vertebral column, the ribs, uh, or the thoracic cage, and the sternum. Now the vertebral column can be broken up into various sections. The top section is referred to as the cervical vertebrae. Uh, your next section is your thoracic, then you go to your lumbar, which is in your lower back, and then your sacral area, including your coccyx, which is at the very bottom. Now your other section, your white um, section of the skeleton here, that's known as the appendicular skeleton. And the appendicular skeleton are all the bits that move your arms, your legs, and your pelvis. So as we go through some of the bones here, I'll go through the bones on the anterior view, and then we'll turn around and have a look at the posterior view. So on the anterior view, uh, you can see on the white bones, we have the clavicle at the front. We then have the humerus in the arms. We have the radius and the ulna. As we keep moving down the arm, we see the carpals, the metacarpals, and then the phalanges. When we come to the bottom section, uh, we start with your uh, pelvis, which is actually three bones in one, but just learn it as the pelvis. We have your femur. We have your patella, which is also known as your kneecap. We have your tibia, your fibula your tarsals and your metatarsals, and then your phalanges again. On a posterior view, you can see the scapula as well at the top. The other thing you need to know about bones is the different types of bones. So for example, uh, a humerus is a long bone. A long bone has a long diaphysis. You then have short bones like the patella, uh, which tend to be a bit more roundish or squarish. Uh, you have flat bones such as the cranium. So you can tell that's a big, large, flat surface. And then we have irregularly shaped bones such as the mandible or the vertebrae. We also have different types of joints. Now there are three basic types of joints. There's the fibrous type of joint, which is immovable. We have the cartilaginous joint, which is slightly movable. And then we have the one that you need to know about, which is the synovial joints, and they are freely movable. Okay, they're the ones that move all over the place and they're the ones that make up the majority of your joints in your body. So now we have to think about the structure and function of synovial joints. So I want you to have a look at the image here. And you can see here that the, the, um, that the synovial joint is made up of ligaments which join bone to bone on the very outside of this joint. Uh, they're a fibrous band and they're mainly there to provide stability. You then have the joint or articular capsule. Uh, now that sometimes this is referred to in two different sections, a fibrous capsule and then a synovial membrane. Uh, but they're actually part of the same uh, piece of tissue. Uh, so this surrounds the joint, uh, has a fibrous outside external layer, and then a synovial membrane on the inner layer. This is essentially there to hold the synovial fluid in the joint, uh, which then allows uh, to make sure that the joint has a bit more stability and also allows for lubrication and stuff. The synovial fluid itself um, is the fluid that's in that joint cavity. It lubricates, it cushions, and it nourishes the joint. Finally, the articular cartilage, which is also known as hyaline cartilage in um, most of the synovial joints, which is smooth white tissue that covers the ends of the bones as they come together. This allows for easy, smooth movement. The function of synovial joints is essentially just to provide movement and also to provide stability. Okay, now let's run through a few of the different uh, types of joints. So you can see here an example of a plane joint. Now this is an intertarsal joint and allows limited gliding movements. Next, we have a hinge joint such as the elbow, which allows movements along one axis for flexion and extension. We have a pivot um, joint here between the C1 and the C2 of the vertebral joint. 
This allows rotational movements and some bending, but not a lot. Next, we have an ellipsoid or a condyloid joint. Uh, an example of that is the joint between the radius and the carpal, which is your wrist. Okay, uh, this allows movement in two planes, allowing for flexion, extension, uh, adduction, abduction, and also circumduction. Uh, next, we have a saddle, uh, which is the base of your thumb. Uh, and this allows some, uh, the same movements as the condyloid, but with no axial rotation. And finally, we have a ball and socket joint, such as the hip. And this allows movement through three planes, so flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and rotation. And is the most mobile of all the synovial joints, but also the most unstable. We're about to shift and have a look at some joint actions, but before we do that, I wanna go through this image on the planes of movement. So here you can see, uh, basically joint actions occur through different planes of movement. And so you can see, um, so we have the sagittal plane that cuts the body down the middle through the nose, down the belly button, uh, between the legs. We have the coronal plane, which cuts the body across from shoulder to shoulder. And then we have the transverse plane that cuts the body in half around the, uh, the torso section. So this is now helpful when we talk about the different types of joint actions. So for example, we have flexion, which is an angle between two body segments decreases across a joint. Uh, or we have extension where angle between two body segments increases, ac increases across a joint. We also have abduction. Uh, abduction is when a body part is moved away from the center line of the body or laterally. Uh, we have adduction, which is when the body part is moved towards the center line or medially of the body. Other joint actions include circumduction, where the distal end of a limb has a circular movement moving 360 degrees while the proximal end uh, remains fixed. So the proximal end is the bit that's closest to your body and the distal end is the bit that's furthest away. And, uh, then we have rotation, when the body part is twisted and occurs in the transverse plane, when we have internal and external rotation and it's about the anterior side of the surface, whether it is going uh, externally or internally. Then we come to some joint specific actions. Uh, here we have things like supination, which is when you turn your hand up like that and make a bowl of soup, okay? Uh, you have pronation, when you turn your hand down. You have inversion, which is when the plantar surface of your foot, which is the bottom of your foot, uh, turns medially, which is in towards the middle of the body. We also have eversion, which is when the plantar surface of your foot turns laterally, which is away from your midline of your body. Uh, we have plantar flexion, which is when the toes and ball of the foot flex downwards or inferiorly. Uh, and we have dorsiflexion, which is when the toes and ball of the foot flex upwards.